thank you, Worley, for the amazing talk. Um, yes, it was well worth it, Worley, waiting for this talk. Thank you, everyone, for being at PuzzleX. Um, PuzzleX is a very unique, unique event, right? We bring different pieces of the puzzle, and once in a while, I run into an organization that really makes me wonder and makes me want to say, how can we work together? And this year, this institute was the Foundational Question Institute, FQXI. I went to one of their retreats, and I was absolutely amazed. And it is my absolute pleasure to welcome to the stage uh, Dr. Dave Sloan, the chief scientist at FQXI. You're going to be, be blown away for, with the next three talks that we have, which is going to be curated by FQXI. Dave, please, on the stage, round of applause. Thank you, Zena. Hi, so I'm David Sloan. I am the Chief Scientific Officer of the Foundational Questions Institute. We are the leading funder of research into the basic building blocks of scientists' best theoretical models of reality. We have over 350 members, leading academics in their fields, including four Nobel Prize winners. And you're gonna be hearing from some of our esteemed members later on today. I also want to advertise that tomorrow, Natalia Ares will be giving a fascinating talk on recent work on how you can convert quantum information into fuel that does useful work. So, our members' interests run a wide range, from complexity to cosmology, biophysics, the philosophy of science, multiverses, black holes. We work on it all. But why does the world need the Foundational Questions Institute? Well, the answer comes down to scientific freedom. Traditional funders demand short-term turnarounds. This, in turn, can lead to incrementalism. Now, incremental science is great when you want to make a faster microchip, when you want to make a more efficient car engine, there's nothing better. But what incremental science won't do for you is give you those paradigm-shifting insights that lead to the first microchip. It won't give you those insights that change the way you see the world. At the Foundational Questions Institute, we see things differently. We support the people, the researchers, the scientists who are willing to ask, what if? With traditional funders, there's a demand for a return on investment. You give someone a grant and you want some product back at the end of it. This, in turn, leads scientists to play things safe and work close to what they already know. What we do is we empower people to ask, what if? Even knowing that nine times out of 10, the questions that they ask will go nowhere. Because that 10th time might just change the world. We are run for scientists, by scientists. I myself am a cosmologist. I work on the mathematics of what happened at the Big Bang and what could have come before it. So I know that big ideas need time to be explored, to be reimagined, reinvented, tested, thrown against a wall, shattered and rebuilt. Scientists need the space to explore their ideas and they can't do this without the freedom to lift their eyes to a distant horizon. At FQXI, we know that a big question can change the world. So let me give you an example. Early in the 20th century, Max Planck faced a conundrum. The best theories of electromagnetic radiation at the time indicated that the power emitted by an object should increase with frequency. In turn, this meant that a lot of bodies should have exploded instantaneously in a burst of high-energy radiation, something that wasn't happening, obviously, as he was still there. He wondered, how could he resolve this? And his solution was to say, what if? What if particles could be emitted by bodies, but only with discrete energy levels? So I could emit a photon with one, two, five, or seven units of energy but not 3.3 or 4.2. Planck redid the calculations with this new discrete theory, and he found 
that his new distribution fit the models much better. It, cor it correlated strongly with reality. He was very happy to have found this and to have solved the ultraviolet catastrophe. But much more came out of this. Quantum mechanics was born. Now, quantum mechanics drives our modern technology. In fact, we've heard today and yesterday about some of the wonderful things that people are doing with quantum technology. The quantum revolution swept away a definite Newtonian understanding of the universe and revealed below it a realm of probabilities. Now we know that a photon can appear to be in two places at the same time. That we cannot calculate and we cannot measure exactly where something is and how fast it's moving to arbitrary accuracy. To understand this, we had to go through and develop entire new branches of mathematics. More than that, the philosophy of science had to change. All of a sudden, we had to be able to account for the fact that logical statements could appear to be in superpositions of being true and false at the same time. So we had to go back to the drawing board, not just on physics, but on mathematics and on philosophy. And out of all this, there came a technological revolution. As we well know, silicon transistors, microchips, the entire of modern electronics runs on the quantum mechanics that was revealed by this. But I want you to go back and remember, this was not Planck's goal. He had no concept of a smartphone or an MRI machine or a laser. He just had a question about electromagnetic radiation. Now, we don't know what tomorrow's technologies are going to be, but we do know they will be built on new foundations. At the Foundational Questions Institute, we know that curiosity is reason enough to ask a question, that knowledge can be a goal in itself, and that scientists are at their very best when they're driven by no agenda other than wondering how the universe works. And I want to invite you to come and learn about some of the questions that our members have been working on. Of course, it's not enough just to ask a big question. Once you start to answer it and you get the hint of an idea, you have to follow that idea wherever it leads. This will often mean having to invent new mathematical tools or techniques. It may mean you have to design and build new experiments. You may have to go and talk to your colleagues in philosophy departments or in chemistry departments to see if they can understand the ideas and use some interdisciplinary work to build up your new models. We always know, though, that this means a lot of hard work. It's going to mean discussions and debates with a community of peers who are going to challenge you every step of the way to prove to them that you are right. Progress, we know, is not linear. In fact, it's not predictable, but often it's measured in terms of balled up bits of paper containing calculations that just didn't go right or ideas that wouldn't quite fit together. But sometimes, when everything goes right, you learn something new about the universe. Ah, it's gone back to that, okay. At the Foundational Questions Institute, we've been funding people who work on these areas for 17 years, and we've had phenomenal amounts of success. Our members have worked on what the fundamental information cost is of measuring the time. What goes on in the center of the black hole or at the beginning of the universe? How a complex system like life could emerge from seemingly phy simple physical laws? And what, how can we enumerate or how can we determine the agency of a decision-making entity? I want to invite you all to come and learn about the questions that we've been working on. Ha, <laughs> not quite rendered right, but that's fine. But now, I want to invite you to come and learn 
how we can work together to investigate the next set of foundational questions. I want to identify two of my colleagues, Lisa and Pinar, who are hopefully in the audience here somewhere. They'd be delighted to talk to you about these things. They're on either side of the room. And of course, anyone who's spent some time here and has talked to me knows that I enjoy nothing more than talking about mathematics, physics, and philosophy. So please do come by and say hi, and let's discuss how we can work together. I want to invite you to come and collaborate with us to help us with the next generation of foundational questions. Understand how you can access our membership, some of the deepest thinkers on the planet. And I want to invite you to invest with us in a future of blue skies thinking driven only by curiosity. Thank you.